Okay guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be discussing QA, engineer salaries. Well, technically, actually different type of engineer salaries like automation engineer, software tester, manual QA, entry level QA. So there's going to be a range of salaries we're going to be discussing and also based on some locations because obviously I have viewers from all over the world. So we're going to be discussing US versus Europe. Yay! So without further ado, let's just jump into it. So first we are going to start off with QA engineer salaries based on their role plus locations as I told you. Okay guys, a little disclaimer though that these are going to be averages like average salaries and yeah this does not include bonuses or stocks. Well at least that's what I think they don't include because in Europe not a lot of companies do give you stocks. It's a new sort of thing that is coming in, coming in from the States, I guess, a, like, like a trend almost, which is nice to get stocks. But yeah, in Europe, not a lot of companies may, do, may not do that. It's more of a US thing. Bonuses, we do get them. There's different type of bonuses, but in what I found in US that you may even get additionally 20 to 37k in bonuses. That's what people have been submitted. So in Europe, will you get that type of bonus? I don't th really think so. But if I'm wrong, I would love to know if you do. So <laughs> yeah. So let's start off with entry level QA engineer. So salary wise, it averages, averages from 60 to 85K a year. Now, there are some states that do pay much higher as you would probably like tell. So in California and Washington, it can go, Washington, it can go 80K plus a year, but in Mississippi and Virginia, Am I saying this right? Oh, it's a West state of Virginia. Miscusi, but it's a West state of Virginia, not Virginia. So there's probably a difference there. So in Mississippi and West state of Virginia, it can go down to, down to, um, it can go up to 65K a year. Does it include uh, stock options and all that fun stuff? It's a bit hard to tell if people do calculate it in their base pay or not, but this is like the average what people are getting. In Europe though, the average is a bit lower, but we have a lower cost of living. Well, I guess it depends though, so maybe not. So an entry level QA engineer in Europe can earn from 35 to 55k. Now the highest paying countries being Switzerland, which actually averages around 90k a year, which also would make sense because Switzerland is one of the most expensive countries in Europe. Next one, I would think it would be probably Norway. And the lowest paying countries are usually Eastern European, like 25k plus, which I guess it does make sense because they are a bit, I guess, cheaper countries. So makes sense. Jumping into manual QA tester and how much he earns. Now on US on average, he could earn from 55 to $80,000. The highest paying states being New York and California, which can bring the average yearly salary to 75K plus. Again, yeah, average. Then the lowest paying states being Southern states, which bring it to around 50K plus a year, which again makes sense because I guess they're much cheaper states compared to New York. I feel like it's probably pretty expensive to live there and I would feel like 75k wouldn't even feel like it's enough. But yeah. Anyways, that's the averages. Now let's check out Europe. On Europe, on average, a manual QA tester can bring in from 30 to 50k a year. Now the highest paying countries being Germany and Netherlands, bringing it up to 50k plus a year and the lowest paying states being Romania and Poland of 25k plus which also makes sense because they're a bit lower although I would think that Poland would be paying much better maybe they don't have enough stats to go on because like Poland has been growing recently recently it's IT sector I feel like so I'm thinking they should be bringing in more money and paying better so 
I don't know, is anyone here from Poland? I would love to hear. Drop it down in the comments. Would love to figure it out. So these are the averages from Europe and US. Now, I'm thinking that maybe uh, also these averages could be impacted by what titles are being used. As we saw, uh, entry-level QA engineers versus manual QA testers. Uh, the highest paid in Europe, for example, was Switzerland. Now it was Germany and Netherlands. I would feel like in Switzerland you would still be getting paid better as a manual QA tester, but maybe not. Or maybe they prefer having engineers rather than manual QAs. So yeah, interesting. Now let's continue with automation QA engineer. On US, an automation QA engineer can earn from 90 to 130K a year on average. Now the highest paying states being California and Washington bringing it up to 120k plus a year and the lowest paying states being midwest bringing it a bit lower to 85k a year expensive living in those states compared to midwest probably maybe not anymore i'm not sure you tell me now in europe an automation qa engineer can bring in from 50 to 85k a year now the highest paying st country state country country being switzerland which can bring it even up to 100k a year and the lowest paying countries being eastern europe basically 35 plus k 35k plus a year you know it's very <laughs> hard to say all these little things yeah so obviously there's some strong factors impacting in, impacting these decisions uh, probably the languages, uh, frameworks, and all that fun stuff, and probably niches that people are in, in Europe and in US. Again, I feel like the FANG companies, the big companies sort of bring the averages up a bit. So yeah, interesting to see these stats. So we have two more, two more roles to cover, which fall sort of under testing or basically roles that you can move into from testing so we're gonna check these out as well so next one we have an estet or software development engineering test that's the full name now on us side on average an estet engineer can bring in from 110k to 160k a year now the highest paying state of course is california bringing it up to 150k plus a year and the lowest playing states being, uh, well, I found basically the non-tech hubs states, bringing it down to 100k plus a year, which is still a good um, yearly salary, I feel like. Now in Europe, on average, an estate engineer can bring in from 65 to 120k a year, which is actually, actually very good for Europe. Yeah, it can bring it up in Germany and UK to 100k plus a year, but the lowest paying countries being Again, Eastern Europe paying around 40k plus a year. A good key thing to know though, the hybrid coding testing roles do tend to pay better as we are seeing here when you are basically a hybrid of tester and coder and automation person. So yeah, we can see the averages Yeah, much better than entry level positions. Now, the last one we have is performance and security tester. Now, I included these because these are still under the testing and they may not usually be the most popular ones people talk about, but I wanted to include them. So on average in US, you can earn from 100 to 170K a year. So here, for some reason, I couldn't really figure out what were the best paid states, but I'm thinking it's still probably Silicon Valley as always. And the niches that pay the best are actually health tech, healthcare, actually healthcare and finances, which can bring it up to on average 160K plus a year, which also makes sense because yeah, they pay well. In Europe, a performance and security tester can bring in from 60 to 110k a year. And again, the highest paying country being Switzerland, bringing it up to 110k a year. And the lowest paying countries being Poland and Romania, bringing it down to 40k plus a year. These are basically all of the roles that I gathered. And I'm gonna put you a graph just so you can see the comparison. 
Once again, I do want to preface that these are averages. It may not include the bonuses and stocks. Some people calculate it in, in the yearly salary, some people don't. And in Europe, not the stocks, getting stocks is, I would say, not a lot of companies do give you stocks. It's, I guess, pretty new thing to be getting them. And there's also just very company specific if they do or they don't. Now I just wanted to run through uh, quickly with a list of the highest paid states and highest paid countries by their averages and the highest paid states being San Francisco, Seattle, Austin, Texas and New York. And the fifth one technically being remote, remote position, which on average also pays similarly to all of these states. Well, a bit less, but pretty well as well. Now in Europe, the highest paying countries being Switzerland, Germany, Netherlands and UK. Again, UK was put in here, but it's technically not part of the European Union, but we're just gonna roll with it because it's basically close by. But I would also feel like Norway also pays pretty well. So are there any Norwegians here? Are you paid well there? I feel like you have a great work-life balance there. And the lowest paying countries, of course, being Romania, Poland, Ukraine. But again, they have a lot of lower cost of living. So that could basically average it out and making it actually a good salary for living there. So let's quickly also jump over what are the factors that impact your salary increase or the fact that you could be earning more. That, of course, is the fact if you have automation skills if, or you don't, if you know anything about performance testing, if you have certain type of certification like ICQB, AWS, then some understanding in the security testing, again, uh, probably some certifications there as well. Of course, some programming skills if you do have them or don't. The most looked, sought after languages are Python, Java and JavaScript. And of course, a lot of the time people are also looking for people who already have the industry experience in finances or health tech, health care. Uh, so, yeah, if you have that, you probably have more foot in the door than someone else who hasn't. It could be possible because of that. Now, key factors that are bringing down you in salary wise is you not having the skills that I mentioned or certifications. Sticking only to manual testing is one of it and not basically growing into either learning to code or automation. And then, of course, working in countries that just doesn't pay enough or good salary. Um, yeah, remote roles, that's why are a great option for people who live in lower paying countries. Now, in order for you to maximize your salary, this is what I would also suggest for you to do your own research. First of all, what the job you are interested in is looking for, like what the job market is telling you. Then maybe you have some transferable skills so you can up upgrade yourself to a new position and of course check out if there are some certifications you can require or acquire so you could get you know bigger salary or possibly new job somewhere else which pays you better okay yeah this comparison was actually pretty interesting to make there's a lot of numbers that i had to go through and i hope you found this video interesting and i would be interesting to hear where guys are you from and how on average are you earning there just to share some insights for everyone else who's going to be watching this video. These are the latest data. And again, I want to preface that it's an average. It may not include everything, of course. It can, you know, sometimes on Reddit, I go on these forums and people share. Some people are earning like 25K and some people are earning like 160K a year. So there's, it's just all over the place. And it's, it can be because of so many different factors. So yeah. Please share as well some tips if you have on how people can upgrade their skills. But my advice to you is to go check out the job market you are in, what it's looking for, what is paying better. If you need to upgrade your skills, you will already see in actionable steps if you have those skills or you don't. And if you don't, of course, yeah, just go after required skills or get these certifications necessary. A lot of the certifications don't even cost that much, but if it can bring you up, salary wise it may well as well be worth it so i wish you guys good luck and 
hope to see you in the next video